we were talking about over rules. Um, let me remind you, what we wanted to do is to gauge our theory with the identification. So we've got a free boson uh, theory, and we were talking about a free non-compact boson to start with. Uh, most of this class we will have the theory on the circle, but just to get the intuition. We have this theory which uh, our target space is a real line. The special point of this real line is what is the origin x equals zero. And then we had the symmetry x equals minus x. And we wanted to gauge our well shape theory with this identification. The x equals minus x clearly is symmetric at a tangent. Clearly del x del x goes to itself. Okay. Uh, so it's a global symmetry, and now we want to gauge the theory with this global symmetry. And at the end of the last class we discussed what that does physically. You've got Let's say a little string that's doing some looping here. It's related to a little string doing some looping here. Okay? So the local dynamics of this little string is unaffected just that there's a mirror partner on the other side. However, there's something else that could happen, which is that instead of the string looping, instead of it coming back to itself, that's what the loop is, it comes back to my instance. That's the twisted set. That's the end of the winding states on a set. The string instead of coming back to itself comes back to itself under 2 pi r plus a. Okay? Some states are clearly localized then because if they try to move, the other end moves the other way. The central pass is always at the origin. Also, they don't migrate. The whole string stays sort of near the origin because if it stretches, it stretches and pays an energy price. Okay? That's clear. Good. Now, uh, the thing that of most interest. Uh, is a generalization of this 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 notion to have a theory which in which the free boson is obvolted both by circle compactification and by you know is gauged both by circle compactification and by its own. Now, would, would you break Lorentz invariance because you're picking a point in space? Oh, sure, you're breaking Lorentz invariance. Circle compactification also breaks Lorentz. Sorry, uh, but, but you you even break. Yeah, I mean, you have uh, the Lorentz uh, invariance of the uncompactified spaces. Ah, and that will continue to be true. Because everything that you're doing yes. is giving some special. You know, you've got a compactified manifold. In that compactified manifold, you're putting a mark point. Who cares? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not a mark point in the non compact space. Excellent. Uh, so, uh, is there anything, will field theory show anything special on this uh, guy? Uh, if you do just quantum field theory? Yeah. Um, if you do quantum field theory by putting a point in space time like this. So suppose I have a four-dimensional quantum field theory, and I put a, a, a point in space time, and I try to make such an identification. Typically, you get divergences at this point, which uh, are hard to resolve. Okay. What's going to be, uh, what's going to be, uh, uh, what we will see is that in string theory, you have these new states, these twisted sector states that resolve these divergences. Yes. Okay, great. Fine. So as I said, the identification that we're going to be interested in will be x is equal to minus x and x is equal to 2 pi r plus x. Okay? Now if this is the first time you're seeing these identifications, it's a little hard to get your head around them. So let's uh, uh, do it properly. Let's first draw the x line. We've got 0, there's 2 pi r, 4 pi r, and so on. As we are very familiar with, the second identification takes the real line and makes it to the <coughs> The question we get asked is what is the first identification? Okay. So, Point by x goes to minus x. 
And then we can translate that to this one. Okay? So we see that even within the fundamental domain we have a new identification. Can you see that this identification is x is identified with 2 pi r minus x. Twisted sector states. Okay. 
small deformation of that. So it's where these two branches meet. I mean, in the end, you can you go from zero to epsilon, it goes from uh, two pi to two pi plus epsilon. That's what it is, I see. What about? In this case, the uh, what you, the thing you have to do is uh, change the left one, left one and right one rightward. Well, when it hits zero, it can change both of them rightward. Ah, exactly, That's exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And so you can continuously, in another way, you can continuously shrink it to zero size without that zero point being a pi. All these can be shrunk to zero size at zero size, zero point being pi. Okay. But those guys can be shrunk to zero size with that zero point being anyway. Okay, so it's true that this particular configuration can be thought of as either, either way. Huh. So it's it's like these two branches meet. Yeah. But that's just one configuration. Okay, good point. Good question. Okay, excellent. So you see that in this in this setup, what we've got is these two walls. These two walls. Space time is a, is an interval. The end of the uh, the end of the intervals are walls. Okay. And we've got twisted sectors living at each of the two walls. Okay? So this is our. Uh, so, so this guy here is our output. Any questions or comments on this? So there will be no left going, right going, this is over here. What? There's. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a. You see, the overfold projection. The overfold condition will give you a projection. We'll look at that. Okay, excellent. So, now the first thing that we want to see is, uh, is the what? Uh, Function. Let us now try to compute the partition function, uh, the torus partition function of this uh, uh, of this oil uh, of this oil
Let me just set something with you. Just give me two minutes. Yeah, the question I mean, 
which power is, is there a physical sense in which there are new configurations that are? Uh, clearly spaces from 0 to pi here, but the only configuration that had an oscillator that was winding here is an identification that is that and configuration. Hilbert space of this theory. Let's just try to understand the Hilbert space of this theory mathematically and then I'll put words to it after we've done that. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm, I'm going to try to understand this Hilbert space is the box. I'm first going to look at this theory and then take that theory and overfold out by this addition. And then I will overfold this by, by this additional identification and see what we get. Okay. So then I just follow the general rules that we uh, that we always use. The rules are that when you're doing uh, uh, when you are I, you've got a known theory and you're overfolding out by some symmetry, you've got two sectors. Okay. The first sector is the untwisted sector. In the untwisted sector, you have the same states that you had in the original theory, except you have to project out by the old by the identification. Okay? And then we have the twisted sector. The twisted sector are, 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 the, are the states where the circle uh, compactification happens up to, you know, things don't come and go around as you come around, mm -hmm. as you go around to pi, and go down, goes around up to the end. So first, let's look at the untwisted sectors here, and then we study the twisted sectors. Okay, then we put them all together, and then we come back to, our, uh, to the words, which I may have said mis misleadingly, if not we did just some time. We'll come back to that, we'll try to draw the pictures again after we go to the Okay, so with the untwisted set, so let's call this, this operation, this operation x goes to minus x, which in this case a name, but we call it R. Okay, so an operator that implements this identification x plus minus x, let's call that R. So, in the untwisted sector, we want to know how the operator R acts on states. Okay, so how, uh, what were the labels for states in the untwisted sector? There were a number of oscillators for the left movers. So, there are various different types of oscillators, let's say NAL, number of excitations of each of the oscillators. There's NAR, number of excitations of right moving oscillators, and then there was a momentum and other. And then there were the non compact directions which are not doing anything, so I forget. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. So, uh, what happens to, the, uh, to all of these? So, I want to know what is R acting on this state. So let's see, what about the oscillators? Each of the oscillators, each of the oscillators was um, an alpha minus something. Alpha was in the expansion of x. x goes to minus x, alpha goes to minus alpha. Okay? So it's clear that what you will get is a minus sign for each oscillator number. Okay? So 
R actor of this thing is equal to minus 1 to the power n a l. Okay. Now, uh, minus 1 to the power net left moving oscillator. This gap. Okay, we will also get minus 1 to the power n a r. Uh, this is really product over all these, all the different kinds of oscillators. I'm not affecting that. Okay? Now, apart from phases, you know, that's all that happens, the oscillator numbers, but n and w are more serious. They go to minus themselves. For instance, the vertex operator for uh, e to the power i p l, you go to the vertex operator e to the power plus i p l. Okay? So momentum switches to minus momentum, similarly with winding. What? N L and R are unflipped. No, no. It's not an orientation reversal. This is X in space time. <laughs> right? It's the space time field that's going to minus it. It's not sigma that's going to minus it. Okay? So this is going to N L A. N R A, uh, so minus N minus. This is clear. Okay, so uh, so what are the words to it? We get a phase. Firstly, we flip momentum in winding, and then we get a phase which is e to the power minus net oscillator number. <coughs> uh, net oscillator number, both for right and for left. Energy of the oscillator num number doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you put an alpha minus 1, alpha minus 2, or alpha minus 3. Each time you put an oscillator, you get a minus. This conclusion that the momentum and winding field is also coming from the mode expansion of X. Is also coming from the mode expansion of X. You can just write down what the momentum was, what the winding is, and as X goes, for instance, for winding is really clear, right? X goes this way or that way. Same for momentum. The momentum is in Schrodinger state, it's e to the power dx. X goes to minus X, P goes to minus P. Yes, yeah, it's totally. Okay, so this is the action of this R on the untwisted sector of, you know, many of these were twisted sector states when we talked about circle bump magnification. But now we're doing that further off. So the whole circle compactified theory is thought of as the untwisted sector. Twists only twists on the X goes to minus X. So in particular, 0 to pi R was a untwisted in this sense. Yes, untwisted in this sense. Exactly. Yes. Okay. <coughs> now we're going to use this to first understand. <coughs> uh, 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 now let's use this to compute the partition function in the other states. Actually, before doing that, let's uh, <coughs> let's see what states are in the other states. So we should be projecting onto states that are uh, <coughs> that get phase factor one in the order of world. So let's take the simplest states. Let's take the states with n equal to uh, w is equal to zero. So n, n to w doesn't change. That tells you that you need to keep only those states with a net even number of uh, oscillators. Any states with an odd number of oscillators is thrown out. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah. So for instance, if you had a state which was alpha minus one, alpha minus one on the left moving side and alpha minus 2 on the right moving side. Such a state say, exists in the original theory, but would be thrown out here. Because it would not, uh, <coughs> uh, because it would not, uh, it would not meet this, this projection condition. Okay? Um, yeah. In the massless sector, however, of uh, string theory, all the states were like alpha minus 1 times alpha minus 1. That was automatically even. So for the massless sector, there's no, uh, this projection does nothing. Okay, the projection is a condition that affects basically massive states. Okay, now let's try to compute the partition function. <coughs> so the partition function of this theory goes as follows. What we have to do is to compute trace of 1 plus r by two. Times e to the minus b times or possibly q to the power of r. 
I do is the projector onto states with r equals 1, because r can have two values, 1 or minus 1. It removes the states with r equals minus 1 and keeps the states with r equals 1 with the right factor. That's why the, 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 the byte is. Okay. Now, viewing it this way makes the computation very easy. Because the first one you get is just half and z counts. Because just half of the partition function that we had originally. Okay. In addition, we get now this, this term which is half of trace of r u to the pi l naught q bar to the pi l naught bar <coughs> over the whole spectrum of the of the torus thing. But now notice r acts on n. Uh, on nw, turning it to minus n minus w. But the overlap between nw and minus n minus w is zero. <laughs> so this r ensures that the only states that survive in this place are those with both n and w equal zero. Right? Because we're doing a trace, we're doing, we've got some state, the same state, and r. And you have this matrix element non zero only when n are both zero. Okay? So that is essentially just completely throwing out the zero oscillator. But now we also we have in addition the oscillators. Okay? Oscillators are very simple, so let's work, uh, let's work out the oscillator. Yes. 
not having changed the pre interval. Okay? So let's look at each of these twisted sectors. So in this twisted sector, what do we have? Let's 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 do our mode expansion. So x as a function of sigma, how do we expand it? Okay? X of uh, so let's do the twisted sector around 0, the twisted sector around 5, the second, I just by shifting on it, it's the second copy of this. Okay? So what we want is that x of 2 pi is equal to minus x of 0 pi. Okay? Now let's see, how do we, uh, how do we, uh, how do we achieve? So, the way we achieved x of 2 pi was equal to x of 0 was to do sum over alpha m e to the power i m sigma. Right? That's how we achieved x of 0 and 2 pi in sigma. Where m was an integer. Now, suppose m was not an integer, but an integer plus half. Then the shift of 2 pi will give you a phase e to the power i pi and e to the pi i pi is minus 1. Okay? So, if our moding, our moding m that was an integer for usual compactification, okay? If our moding, our moding m, which was an integer for usual compactification, just became a half integer instead of an integer, we've got the correct mode expansion for uh, for the twisted set. All of the rest of the quantization goes through unchanged. It's just that the oscillators have different frequencies from the moding. The moding goes from integer to half integer. How do we see the fact that twisted sector states are localized at the order? What was the fact that untwisted sector states could go wherever they want? The zero mode. Right? There was some interesting zero mode which allowed them to move anywhere they want. Now, m equals zero is no longer an option. We have half and minus half. We have half and minus three half. Five half and minus five half. Every mode carries energy. So we've got each mode is a harmonic oscillator. There's no mode that's like a free particle. Okay? <coughs> Great. So uh, now this partition function, apart from one detail, <coughs> and that detail is the zero point energy, if we work that out carefully. Apart from the detail of the zero point energy, this partition function is extremely simple. Okay. Uh, how is it extremely simple? It's just the following. Um, firstly, we have to keep only these guys, and then, of course, also in the um, also in the twisted sector, also in the twisted sector, we have to project only onto the invariant states. Let me say, <coughs> let me say this in terms of a torus partition function. In the torus partition function, okay, what you do, and have we study? If we have to study this, we will soon. But you know, in the torus partition function, what you do is the following: you have the torus partition function with with usual boundary conditions around sigma and and tau. Plus the torus partition function with the R boundary conditions, with the twist of R around sigma. The sum of those two, one of them is the untwisted sector, and the other one is the twisted sector, because you go around up to an R identity. But by modular invariance, you also have to put the sum of one and R in the time direction. That is the projector. In both the twisted sector and the untwisted sector, you have this projection. It doesn't matter whether you come back to yourself like this. The states have to be annihilated by the order before projection. Okay. Yeah, only putting both the circles on the torus. No, no. This torus is the Wilshi torus. Okay? The torus is the torus on which you're computing your conformal field. And the order before thing is happening on X. So the torus is just a torus. Are you understanding what's the Okay? Excellent. So now the untwisted in the twisted sector also, 
becomes 0 and the value becomes 5. So the half goes away. So the fact that we are on a circle. No, the fact that we have two twisted sectors yes. is something that's only drawn when we're looking at torus partition. No, no. It's a, it's a physical fact. It's a fact that we are doing the x goes to minus x projection of a theory which was circle compact. Right. Mm -hmm. That surface is space time circle. So that, that there are two twisted sectors is just a fact about the theory. There are two places where things live. This is, there's an interval, there are two entropy. Okay? And then now we're doing the torus partition functions, we have to sum over the states that live in each of these two twisted sectors. Okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay? So now let's do it one by one. So the first, now let's do the twisted set. We don't have the half for the reason I mentioned, two twisted sectors. Okay? We have the one, and that is just trace of QL0, Q bar L0 bar in, in the twisted sector. But that is exactly what we would have for ordinary string up to the zero mode, which we come to. The zero point energy, which we come to. It's just the ordinary thing, but with half integer Okay? So that is equal to product over n. 1 minus q to the power n, so n is equal to equal to 0 to infinity n plus half. Is this here? sense. 
that's all. Now, the first thing we did was to take this, you know, uh, this, uh, this circle of sigma, which was of length 2 pi, and make it 2 pi. It's useful to do that because the helpers separate out different effects. Okay? And uh, this, uh, these frequencies, which were 1, 2, 3, were actually 1 by r, 2 by r, 3 by r. Okay? This is obvious. Massless fields. So that's the morning. So this was act so this we in the end set r equals one. But this quantity is replaced by half sum over n by r. Okay? Now first I'm going through the calculation we did in the form. And then I'll show you the quick modification we can do. Uh, and I think we'll watch it. Why is it just 
half of the three by three. Ah, that's you're talking about the twisted secret I'm going one, one by two plus two by two plus three by two plus four by two. Yeah, there's an overall half of it. Yeah. We'll get to the twisted second calculation soon. Okay, I just want to remind you and show you get this right answer here. So that you, you see that I'm not pulling a fast one. Okay. Okay. Great. So you agree that this f of x is this. So what we want to do is to evaluate these things with this choice of f of x. Okay? Now, Moira McLaurin has this f of 0 by 2. But f of 0 in our case was just 0. Okay? So we apply Euler, Euler McLaurin to this quantity. So it starts with this stuff. So we should just get the integral. So the first term we get, so we, what we've got is that sum n is equal to 1 to infinity n by r g of n by r lambda is equal to integral dx g of x by r lambda x by r minus f this derivative of this prime. But we're going to evaluate that at zero. Okay? And if we evaluate that at zero, then we better differentiate this guy. We better differentiate this guy. Otherwise, uh, uh, Otherwise, uh, we we'll end up with zero. Uh, then we'll evaluate this guy at zero, but that's one. So minus one by twelve r. Okay. Now this quantity we can express in terms of a pure integral after the change of variable. So I just call x by r lambda. Let me call that y. Okay? So if I call x by r lambda, I call that y, then uh, I'll put a lambda here and a lambda here, and then r, uh, sorry, uh, r lambda here, so lambda squared r here, and then this becomes just r lambda squared integral gy dy. This is a pure number, depending on what your regulator is, you don't care. The important point was that this term here was proportional to R, and therefore exactly the kind of term that can be removed by a local counterterm, which is a cosmological concept of local counterterm. Any such local counterterm will contribute to the energy proportional to R because it will be integrated over, over the radius. Okay. So by tuning a cause a counter term correctly, we can cancel this term. It's y y dy. Y dy. G of y dy. This is an order one number. You know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this term was irrelevant because it could be cancelled by a local counter term. In fact, the demand that you have, the vacuum energy vanishes at r equals infinity, will require us to choose a counter term to exactly counter cancel that. But this term was physical because it could not be cancelled by a counter. Because its dependence is not R, it was one way. Okay? And that gave us that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 was minus 1 by 12. And therefore gave us that this vacuum energy, which was half of that, was minus 1 by 24. That was the minus 1 by 24 shift that we see, for instance, in this formula. Okay? okay? Now, what we're going to do is to modify this calculation to make it relevant to what we are actually uh, trying to compute. Okay. So, um, what do we uh, what do we want? We want n minus. Okay. Let me just write it. Shifted from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 
to half, three halves, and so on. So it's the same formula, but n should be shifted by minus half. Uh, n minus half uh, by r. You already but, taken a half out. What? Th this overall half out, that's just omega by 2. This half is in what? The mode numbers. The mode numbers, instead of being 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, there's a the half in the mode number itself. Oh, sure, 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 sure. That's the effect we have to deal with. In fact, it will be more convenient to switch this to n plus half okay. and turn the sum from 0 to <coughs> the n plus half r. Okay? And then we have our g of n plus half. That was the actual momentum that was running in this. By r. This is the thing we want to extract. Is this yet? Okay. So once again, we're going to do this estimation without the uh, without the half, and we put the half in. Yeah. Okay. So what do we have to choose f of x to be? So let's choose f of x equals x plus half by r. Now what will we get? So I'm removing the overall. We put this half back. Okay. First, Euler Maclaurin helps us estimate when we have an f of zero by two. But here we have f of zero is not zero anymore. So we we'll separate. But we have it all of this. This not by by two, by one. So. What we will do is to say that we we'll separate out half of what we got from f of zero. Okay, so this is essentially one because lambda is going to be infinity. Okay, so that is one by four r. Okay, plus you know this thing is zero plus the other. So that plus then we can use the Euler method for the rest. So integral zero to infinity. Integral zero to infinity. Uh, x plus half g by r g of x plus half by lambda. This whole thing prime, x prime at zero by two. Now, if we differentiate this guy, so we no longer get zero because this. However, when you differentiate this guy, you pull down one by lambda. Anything that goes to infinity, it goes to zero. As lambda goes to infinity, we get a problem. Okay. So once again, we only do end up differentiating this. Guy. Okay, so once again, what we get is minus one by twelve, one by twelve bar. Okay, but we've got these two traditional terms. This is the same thing as before. Let me differentiate this. Not yet. Okay. But now we've got these two additional terms. Okay, this this term's a clear term, but there's also this term. Now about that term we have to be a bit careful. Because I mean clear in this. Uh, so you can use one of the formula on a LHS you have such from any one of the infinity here you are not looking for it. Well here I sum from one to infinity? Yeah, but now here I have zero to infinity, so I separate. 
integrated of half of f of 0. That is this case. Then we got f of 0 by 2 plus n equals 1 bit. So the first term will be the first term was this. So, so this sum is this plus f of 0 by 2 plus sum over n f of 1 uh, n equals 1 to infinity. Do you understand? What I wanted to do, this sum has f of 0 plus f of 1 plus f of 2. Euler Maclaurial has f of 0 by 2 plus f of 1 plus f of 2. So I explicitly took out half of f of 0. Is this clear? Okay, and then the rest is, is, is summed by Euler Maclaurial. Is this clear?
proportional to 1 over lambda square r square. So the lambda square cancels there and the r square r becomes 1 by r. So that term could not be, uh, could not be cancelled by a local computer. So same footing as all the other terms. Okay? This is the kind of thing that people often get wrong. Because it's very easy to say, ah, oh, we'll cancel this by a local computer. <laughs> Uh, but you have to be careful. Only terms that scale like R can be cancelled by looking. Okay? So I'm continuing here. So what have we got? So what have we got? So now this thing here, this thing after whatever we call the cancel by local after term. This, uh, do you agree with me? It gives us minus 1 over 8 R. Okay, so we've got 1 over 4 R minus 1 over 8 R. Uh, minus 1 over 12 R. Now we have to do this LCM kind of thing, right? Okay. So, uh, 24, right? Ah, 20. So this is, right, this is plus 1 by 24. Because this, when we make it 24, this thing has a 4, minus 2, no. This thing has a 6, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, so plus 1 by 24. Okay? So, where we previously had minus 1 by 12, we now have plus 1 by 24. Adding and subtracting, you're saying? I think you're right. I think you're right. Let me let me try to check if Lovely's thing works. It works. <laughs> yes, I think you're right. Yeah, Lovely has a very clever trick. You know, the only thing about that is that those manipulations quite perfectly legitimate for convergence series. Yeah, you're probably right. the same. That's what I'm saying. That's you're probably right. It certainly works. Yeah, so Lovely is the same. Look, what we've got is one plus three plus five. So what we can do is make it 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 minus even. the even ones. Okay. Even and double minus 2 times 1 quarter deposit becomes plus and this becomes minus. So it comes out to 1 quarter deposit. 1 over 24. Okay, I haven't checked that, but, but that, that, that's, that's great. That's great. And it's probably, you can probably justify it under the under appropriate regulation. You can probably, when things are regulated correctly, you can do that. Probably. Uh, okay. However, your thing would not work if we had some other shift. If we had a shift by root 2, for instance. This method will always work. Okay? Uh, it's just systematic. We're just running data. Okay, but good point. Good point. Okay, excellent. So now let us finally write down the full partition function. Okay, I probably need your help for parts.
plus no half q q bar to the power 1 by 48 product and then product n plus half I mean n ok let's say n is equal to 0 to infinity 1 over q to the power n plus half 1 minus 1 minus q bar to the power n plus half and then there was the R term which was plus 1 over 1 minus q 1 plus q to the power n plus half 1 over 1 plus q bar to the power Is this clear? This is the full partition function. Okay. Now, this partition function, of course, contains in it the full spectrum of the theory and so on. Um, and one can unravel this, and we're going to try to do some of that. But uh, before. Uh, uh, we can also try to check that it's modulated. So, okay. uh, but before we do that, there's something else that I want to do. And that's the problem. Okay? I want to show you that while this theory is, you know, a different theory from tor toroidal compactification in general, there is a special value of the radius. When you do the or orbifolding, Okay. In which this becomes equal to a particular toroidal compact. Okay. And the idea is very simple. So let me explain the idea. Then I tell you how to check. Suppose we start with this, the original theory before we do the overfolding was that R is equal to square root alpha prime. Our favorite value, self dual self dual value, the value where you have this S U to submit. Okay? Now, so we have this, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, R is equal to square root alpha prime. And what is the orbifold? What is the orbifold mean? It was X goes to minus X. Or equivalently,
fixed the sign jy, and jz, leaving jx unfixed. Uh, I mean, unchanged. Okay, excellent. So, this at this particular point, orbit folding is just a 180 degree rotation. It's orbit folding by a 180 degree rotation around jx. Symmetry in space time. On the world sheet, it was just an ordinary global symmetry. Okay, so the world sheet theory is changing. Okay, we well, have the discussion so far is world sheet. Okay. Right. Now, but, but the, the key thing here is because we got this SU2 invariance, a 180 degree rotation is a 180 degree rotation. So if we find it more convenient to do a rotation about some other axis. Should be as good. Okay? So instead of choosing to rotate about the x axis, let us now choose to rotate about the z axis. Okay. So rotating about the z axis, what does that do? That flips, this, uh, flips the sign of jy and jz. Okay? So we want some operation. On, on the field X that would end up flipping the sign of J1 and J Z. Okay. Now, uh, for this, if somebody has their notes, now I need the number. Somebody has their notes, if you can help me with the number, that will be there. Okay, so J1 and J Z, well, Sorry, the Jx and Jy. Jx and J, uh, Jy both flip sign. It's flipping the sign of Jx and Jy. That, two by alpha. Two by alpha. So e to the power plus minus 2 by alpha prime. flip sign then j plus and j minus obviously both flip sign because j plus and j minus are jx plus i j y j minus. So I want some operation, some symmetry operation in the x sigma model that has the effect that it does not change the sign of L except but it does change the sign but it does change the sign of uh, j plus minus. But there's an obvious one. It's XL goes to XL plus pi square root alpha prime. Uh,
pi square plus one. Jx, Jy, both have to become minus. Not in the exponential. Oh, okay, I see it. And then we want J plus to become minus J plus and J minus to become minus J plus. Okay? And that will happen if we get a pi. And pi is perfect because it is for plus i and it is for minus i. It is for plus i pi and it is for minus i pi are both minus pi. So J plus and J minus both flip by the same. Okay? So you see. That this shift, of course, that it is a shift in Excel is clear because we're doing a rotation around the z-axis. We know what generates rotations around the z-axis. Del Excel. We just have to get the number right. Okay. It's clear that the del Excel is just shifting Excel. Okay? So it's just a shift by some amount, and this is a cheap argument to figure out what the value of that shift. Okay? Excellent. But you see, x goes to x plus pi square root, um, pi square root alpha prime, it's just taking a circle which was of circumference to pi square root alpha prime and making it pi square root alpha prime, which means changing the radius instead of self, self unit radius alpha square root alpha prime to self unit radius by 2 square root alpha prime. By d divided the square root alpha prime by 2 is the same thing as the radius, 2 square root alpha So, we now have this remarkable claim. We have the claim that the orbital theory, which is in general different from certain compactivity, and if you orbital the self dual radius theory, that should be the same as the unorbifolded. Circle compactification theory and radius half or equivalently twice self dual radius. Okay, now there's of course a strong check of this, which is that this partition function, when we set the particular value to be self dual radius, should be equal to the partition function of the twice self dual radius or half self dual radius circle uh, compactified theory. And uh, this is some miracle, it's true, there's some identity between theta functions that uh, uh, theta function people knew all along. <laughs> but uh, now we have some physics in there. Okay, it's something you can check on mathematical uh, if you wanted to expand. Okay, why is this identity is of course true? It's not like a trivial identity. What often happens in humanities is that you get the same functions but with different representations. In fact, the people have understood things like uh, indi uh, checked 
duality of uh, uh, indices of cyber dual theories more recently, in the last five or six years, they found new identities for hypergeometric functions that the mathematicians didn't know. That they then proved once they realized that they have to be true. Of course, for physicists, you check up to level 20 and you say, okay, it's true. <laughs> unitary conformal field theories at uh, C equals 1. Which of this believed or true? Let me see what happens. Oh, he said, he's more careful. He said, these are all of the known C equals 1 CFTs. special points here obtained by further twisting these things. Uh, a special isolated additional point, which I'm going to ignore. You can read about it. Uh, in addition to these, there are special isolated additional field theory that you get by doing orbifolds on discrete subgroups of this. Okay, I, I will not try to do that. It's not, it doesn't play any, as far as I know, it doesn't play any great story. Uh, it's, uh, and the story, which why was Why was the orbifold branch? Okay, so we started with circle compact by theories and orbifold them. The space of circle compact by theories only existed from root alpha prime to Okay, if you start with two equivalent theories and orbifold, yes, I'm okay, good. Okay, so no, we start with the full set that you had and then orbifold. Is this clear? Okay, so we have in front of us the space of Normal C equals 1 conformal field theories. All of these theories can be used, of course, to make two theories. These are little elements. If you want to compactify, 
by one dimensional infinite degree. This is all we have in our hands. Okay? And uh, it's quite a beautiful story, in particular involving this very special theory, which plays an organizing role, helping you understand both the duality as well as the equivalence of the order before compactification at a particular radius with a uh, plane circuit compactification at a uh, radius. Okay. Now, uh, uh, the last thing, uh, apart from coming back to telling you to uh, correcting my words, which I'll think about and correct next. I'm pretty sure the formula is proven that next, right? Uh, uh, the last thing I wanted to discuss was uh, uh, open strings and the brains on circuits. I think that's one more lecture before we can move on to volume two, uh, which is the super string. Okay? So, uh, uh, next class, uh, which I suppose will be next Wednesday. Wednesday so Yeah, so next Friday, I think it will be next Friday, uh, so next uh, Friday we will discuss, uh, um, we we'll discuss uh, circuit compactifications and open strings, and uh, we will encounter d brains, which we have not discussed so far, right? And we will go through the calculation of the, of uh, the tension of the d brain, it's all great stuff, it's all classic. And then uh, I hope we can do all that in one lecture, uh, after which we will uh, move on to the study of the super Okay. So just a uh, uh, question. So if you had multiple dimensions compactifying and you had uh, all kinds of uh, all folding in each of the compact compact directions, yes. just, just just to measure the, uh, yes. the, the worst, uh, <laughs> most complicated thing. Yes. So uh, when we got multiple, when we had multiple compactifications, uh, there was this phenomena that the, the fitting of uh, uh, the uh, this the radius being of a spe specific value, the analogous thing was the yes those things which so here, so here it should give even more richer structure of. I think it will. I think it will. So 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 this th this should get uh, there will there would be high dimensional analogs, but you see there will be even more complex. Because in higher dimensions, orbifolding folding is not the only thing you can do. There's some more things that we see. For instance, let me move on to to the supersymmetric theories for two minutes, where it's better understood. Okay. Suppose we look at the space of c hat equals four, which is the analog of c equals four. Okay, so four dimensional uh, compactifications. Okay, so so conformality theories with which would have been c equals 4 except that they have a super partner. So they become c equals 6. It's often called c hat equals 4. Uh, conformity. Okay? Then there are or particular order folders, okay, which look sort of very much like these order folders. Except that they allow a blow up into a geometric distance. Okay? So see, the most general space of C hat equals for conformity theories, without thinking of all these funny orbifolds, what you would look for is solutions of Einstein's equation. We've already seen, right, that we can try to make conformity theories by solving the beta function condition. The beta function condition by solving Einstein's equation. So instead of looking at these very, from the point of geometrical point of view, very singular spaces, like the orbifolds, you can try to look at uh, smooth solutions of Einstein's equations. And in the case of C hat equals 4, uh, because you can put a lot of supersymmetry in the worksheet of that, that thing, you can prove the existence of large classes of exact conformity theories, which in large volume driven reduce to um, sigma models. The sigma models on a space called K. Okay? This is some complicated geometrical structure with some nice mathematical properties. Now, K3s are not a particular space. They come in a, they have moduli. This class of spaces. And these K3 spaces admit degeneration points. And there is one degeneration limit of this K3 in which the conformal field theory reduces to an orbifold conformal field theory of a 
So in that situation, you have such things, but the whole story is richer than the lines. It extends out into other directions that do not exist in one direction. That you, that, that, you, that you get the solving the answers equation. That's one way of doing it, but yeah, <coughs> there are more ways. Yeah. You can look, look, look also. So, <coughs> so, just an analysis. The space of C hat equals 4 superconformity theory is much richer than all before is a circuit of application. Only compatibility, there's only two possibilities. For what? One decompactification? Nothing. This is basically the statement that in 1D, there's no curvature. So like, if you identify x with some other direction, it's like y or something like that. But then it's not 1D. You, by 1D, I mean just doing only, take one of the directions, one of your, one of the 25, one of the 26 dimensions in the property theory, and doing something to that. Okay? You might have thought more about trying to make that space curved. But there's no such thing as a curved one piece of it. Because every metric is diffeomorphism, at least locally, diffeomorphism equivalent to the flat metric. Right? She so can't have non trivial solutions of Einstein's equations in one way. So, the geometrical analogs are not allowed in one way. Okay? You have to be in at least higher dimensions. And, you know, honestly speaking, it could be that I, I went straight up to B equals 4. You could ask why not B equals 3. There's a whole discussion we can have. Uh, the honest real reason for that is that B equals 4 is a dimension in which the world sheet conform, world sheet theory can be made highly supersymmetric. And you can then use the high, high degree of supersymmetry of the world sheet to give exact statement. Because you can solve Einstein's equations, but those are ordered order in alpha prime. And you're not sure whether it, whether it continues to some exact state. Okay, with a high amount of supersymmetry, you can... Uh, sorry, because there's something in the question. No, actually, the reason for this question is because of polytech. I was thinking, like, volume-wise, if you compactify one direction, the volume of the thing should go as, it's a cylinder. It would be pi r square h if you compact.
tells you that our classical notions of geometry uh, are good at long distances, but it just fails at short distances. What, what don't they see? They don't see the twisted sectors. And you know these twisted sectors, so for instance, you know, yeah, the twisted sectors look totally different. But at this value, they just give you the same thing. Yeah, exactly. That's the miracle of string theory. It's giving you a generalized notion of geomet geometry, which is useful. Yeah, this is one of the things, one of the reasons why string theory is proved so useful in that. Yeah, so the, notice we have not even done quantum again. By which we mean, so far we are studying classical string Because we are not doing new back things. Conformal field theory on the well sheet is classical string So even just by doing classical string theory, we are saying that, you know, well, let's say it another way. Two geometries can look geometrically very different, but still see them to be identical. Even without, we are the quantum effects. It's purely classic. And the quantum effects do more. This thing of the resolution of the conifer, and that's fine. Some of it will be by this. 